Good afternoon to you. Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Pro and HD video blog for Monday, the first day of September 2014. Taking a look at sea surface temperature anomalies for today, starting off the week. Warming up here in the tropical Pacific, slowly but surely that El Nino is coming on. Uh, it wasn't here in the earlier part of the season, but that didn't really matter. The Atlantic Basin, at least out here in the deep tropics, pretty much shut down completely. Cooler water relative to average down in the deep tropics with much warmer than average water in the subtropics displaces the upward motion and the ability for tropical waves to come off here and develop. This area is just very stable with its air mass uh, right above the surface and we haven't seen much development. But in the eastern Pacific as evidenced by these cold water wakes here it's been very active, including a Category 5 Hurricane Marie just a, uh, several days ago, and it sent those enormous swells into parts of California and along the rest of the Pacific coast here. The um, Caribbean Sea and Gulf of Mexico is still running quite a bit above the long-term average water temperature-wise. So this will be the primary, uh, primary area to watch over the coming weeks, I believe. We could still get something coming off probably curve out to see if it does. Maybe an old front comes off and develops something in the southwest Atlantic. But other than that, I believe that the focus is going to be in this area over the next several weeks, which is typical in a developing El Nino season. Looking off the coast of the eastern part of the United States, very warm water for sure, but we just don't have anything coming across the Atlantic to come up the coast to take advantage of that. So this will be interesting some of these water temperatures in here are running a bit above normal as well. Um, this orange area is 82 degrees. Uh, and then in the Gulf Stream here you get into the mid-80s. Very, very warm water. If the hurricanes don't take the heat out, uh, the warm water, of course, does gradually cool off just from the seasons changing. But it may set up for some powerful winter storms later on down the road. Getting ahead of ourselves, right? The tropical uh, cyclone heat potential map here, uh, you can see that very, very warm water right off the southeast coast there. Kind of unusual to have that much deep warm water. Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, very warm as well. Caribbean is the warmest in the western hemisphere as far as the upper ocean heat content. So our system that we're watching, Invest Area, 99L, center of circulation probably in here somewhere. Hurricane hunters have departed Mississippi. They'll go down here and check it out. And we'll hear more from the National Hurricane Center later today. It does look like a tropical depression will try to form out of this and move off in the general direction, uh, maybe near Tampico, plus or minus 50 miles. So keep an eye on that. The NRL Navy site here from, um, I guess it's the Monterey site. This is the Tropical Cyclone Formation Alert Area. And it looks like something will get going in the Bay of Campeche. And as I mentioned, more than likely heading off near Tampico, Mexico, and vicinity. The model plots agree with that. This is from our partner site, Hurricane Analytics. And it comes across the Bay of Campeche. No threat to Texas, which is right up here. Uh, maybe some onshore flow bringing in an increase in moisture. But that's just about the extent of it. Water temperatures in the Gulf, very, very warm once you get away from the southeast Bay of Campeche. I mean, they're still really warm down here, don't get me wrong, but this is even warmer along the path towards the eventual landfall area, 30 degrees Celsius, and then these orange areas are mustard color, whatever, 31 degrees Celsius. We're talking 86, 87, 88 degree water, very, very, very warm. So the global forecast system, the GFS, showing 24 hours out. There's the tropical system developing as it moves away from the Yucatan, heading towards somewhere near Tampico at 36 hours. Uh, another system developing in the Pacific as this closes in on a possible landfall in and around Tampico area. Finally, on Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, this should be inland or close to it, in and around the Tampico area. Strong onshore flow especially to the north, a little bit of a storm surge, rough seas, squally weather, maybe tropical storm conditions, but a lot of very heavy rain here along the coast and just inland. You get a pretty good terrain rise uh, just inland from the coast, so the threat of flash flooding and mudslides could be an issue. Looking out in time, the GFS upward motion chart 
unfavorable now, unfavorable five days from now, 10 days a little less unfavorable. But then by day 15, now this is far out into time, but these are larger weather patterns that are easier to forecast than smaller weather patterns and individual storms like a hurricane. But it does show in about two weeks that this green area is sign uh, signifying upward motion becoming a little bit more favorable. The climate forecast system generally mimicking that thought. This is the current time frame. Uh, we'll go out to five days unfavorable, ten days a little bit more favorable in the Western Caribbean, and then even more so throughout the rest of the month of September, so that maybe once we get past about the 15th of September here, things become a lot more interesting in the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico region, the climate forecast system agreeing with the GFS that that would be the place to watch. And that goes part and parcel with what we would normally look for after about the mid part of the month the Western Caribbean and the Gulf becomes the area to monitor. Anyway, climatologically speaking. So we'll keep our eyes on 99L. Of course, you can track it if it becomes a named anything, depression, storm, or probably not going to be a hurricane, but you can track whatever it does form into right along there in your app, Hurricane Pro and HD, and any satellite and radar from the area. Uh, other information, of course, readily available. Very nice to have. Well, that is it from me for today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Thanks for tuning in, as always. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Always a privilege and an honor to produce these videos for you on Hurricane Pro and HD. And I'll talk to you later in the week as we track what 99L eventually turns into.